The sphere is the gold mine. So never lose track of your sphere and hold them like precious gold. Agent Power Huddle is a daily jumpstart, giving you all the tools you need to create an amazing real estate career. Led by top experts in the field, you'll learn how to sell more houses in less time while creating the life you want. Welcome to the Agent Power Huddle. Good morning, guys. Welcome to an amazing Agent Power Huddle. We got our uh, our guest host on today, Kim Barber, who has been not only a longtime friend of mine, but someone that I've always just thought, Kim, you always have such innovative things in our industry. And we finally caught up a few weeks ago. Like, that's what you've been working on lately. This is amazing. <laughs> thank so you. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's the great it's people I see here. Yeah. It was, so we got, we'll have some people here live. Anyone who's here live, you're welcome to ask Kim questions. Obviously, there's going to be uh, a lot of people watching this recording later, Kim as well. But um, the million dollar lead follow up strategy, that's our topic today, right? What, why yeah. don't you give people some background? in terms of like, how, how did you become qualified to talk about this million dollar lead follow-up strategy? And then we'll, then we'll just dive into it and you can, you can run with it. Yeah. Yeah. So hello everybody. Yes, I am Kim Barber. I live out in uh, Northern Virginia. I uh, have Kim Barber coaching and I am also an EXP agent. I've uh, been in the business for 2000, since 2004. So uh, basically, you know, just to kind of give a tad bit of my background. Before I was in real estate, I helped build cutting edge technology, a lot of uh, software and enterprise wide systems that runs every major industry of the world today. And I jumped into my second passion of real estate in 2004. So, um, you know, one of the things that I always was was good at because of my background was really keeping track of people and moving, you know, so I had a database right away and things like that. Uh, and also, you know, the 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 one thing that I that I learned in my first career is that, you know, repeat business and referral business was really the way to go. Um some of the other things that happened to me as I moved into my career, uh, I got to the point that in 2016, 17, I was on track to do a million dollars a year. And I had some things happen to me uh, that affected my health for about five years. So coming into that, I had used systems and, you know, as things evolved in real estate, I had used systems like um, agent office and top producer, which were like super ancient back in the day. Then, you know, right. Remember those? So those so, are so fun. old school at this point. It's so funny. So, yeah. right. I was like, oh my God, top producer, like anybody that's using it, no offense, but it was the first in its age. It was a little uh, challenging to use. Um, then I went to, you know, like Boomtown and some of our friends, you know, built these amazing systems, real geeks. Um, I got frustrated with something. So I built my own. And so I had a lot of health issues. Um, you know, my right arm stopped working for three years. I couldn't uh, lift my arm, uh, do the phone, you know, these things. Then I had to have my jaw had to be um, severed after that so that my teeth would stop cracking. Uh, a surgery I had put off for quite a few years. And um, about nine days after I got my braces off, my colon ruptured. And so that was obviously a very uh, in trauma situation. So what had happened in this five or six years of me being very heavily dependent on my team, I had spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in leads because that's what they tell us to do in real estate, is that I watched all this money slip through the cracks. You know, I wasn't in front of them. I had built a lot of campaigns, but some of this technology really just wasn't designed to allow us to be able to configure uh, what we do every day as well as I knew that we could because of my first career. So when I audited what had happened, of course, I knew the difference of what I was making and what I then was making when I wasn't uh, in front of everybody. That ended up being about 3.2 million, Jesse and everybody in uh, commissions that was opportunity that had slipped through the cracks of people that had told us that they plan to buy and sell. So I was still making, you know, five or 600,000 a year, but when you're missing that extra and you do the compound effect. So um, just to share of this journey that I went on is uh, after uh, it took me about a year, <laughs> I was never bitter. I was never bitter about my health things. And, but it was very, very frustrating that, um, that, that happened. So what I did is I was like, I'm never doing this again. I went back to the drawing board of having built 
other companies in the past. And when I helped build a software company, you know, there's two ways to grow a business. And, and you all know that you can increase the leads or you can increase the return on investment from the leads. And really, in most other industries, they really focus on that second part. I feel like in real estate, and it's statistically said, like, what is it, Jesse? You know, what, 83% of the people don't use the same agent in the yep. future. Is that what it is? Yep. Yep. And they always and they always say lack of communication and follow up, right? They just they just don't remember who they are. They That's don't right. Think about them. That's right, right? I mean, everybody's going to meet another agent. You know, everybody's going to have that friend that just got in the business or that neighbor. They moved in there and they see their signs everywhere. So that statistic is real, and so that's just a testimony to that. That's not really what is taught. And what I realized is that um, in order for me to really increase the ROI of the leads and overall is I had to sit down and go, what happened in those five or six years and how, how can I fix it, right? So there was a lot of experience from software and technology, a lot of pain and money that happened in that duration. The gift of me not having these major health things is that it allowed me to see where the leads were dropping and the bad habits and the situations. And it motivated me to say, okay, let me step back. How do I increase the return on investment from the leads? I'm sure that we were in meetings before masterminds and stuff like that at different conferences where I'm like, we have to be able to beat the one to 3% conversion. Like this is just not acceptable. And I think now, like this year, it was 0.4 to 1.2%, according to NAR. And um, so what I did to fast forward is um, I decided to take my my first career, my second, and blend them together. And I did this for myself first. And I reverse engineered exactly what I did very well at that point over 800 times. Every single day, what we do well, what we all do well is buy and sell real estate. But how do we reverse engineer what we do? day in and day out to follow up with leads over a period of time. And because we know that like Facebook leads take over 400 days to sell, you know, some of the more expensive ones are faster. Our sphere, you know, they buy and sell in the future again. So how do we keep track of them? How do we repeat what we do every day, leveraging um, technology? And so that's what I built. And that's kind of the story of how I got there. And I use that background, um, of my technology and, and my college stuff, decision science and management information systems. Uh, that's what my career was, taking technology and knowing logic and decisions and build them together. So that's what I did, Jesse. That's my background for everybody, uh, how I got to this point where I talk about master your database, make your millions. So I, yep. I love it. I love it. And thanks for giving the background. So so now that we kind of know the, the framework, what is the million dollar lead follow up strategy? And is this something anybody can can start implementing? I mean, what, what's the what's what's the basis of this? Yeah, so there's a couple of things. And I was thinking about this coming into this meeting uh, w- with our session today, because I think one of the things that I that I don't talk about a lot that I want to bring up here is that in reflection of the software and the technology and thinking about how many agents are newer in the business. I think one of the things that's fundamental is making sure that we understand what each technology has to offer, right? And so really making sure that we know the power of each one so that in my history, you know, did I really leverage every tool that they had or did I just jump over here because it was the next thing that I heard that was going to be the greatest or this was going to be easier? So one of the things that I just want to want to put the caveat is understanding the technology um, that you that you decide to work in. So master your database, make your millions has different layers to it. And so the first thing is I built a framework. So how, how would I go and reverse engineer and put this into place? Um, I built a framework that anybody can follow. So fundamentally, uh, anybody can follow it because technology, the place that technology has in our business is just to replicate, like keep track of our customer journey, replicate what we do and and follow up with leads over time. So when you can master your database, it means first that we have to also know where our leads are. So what's our strategy? So I call it the million dollar lead framework. What's our strategy for what you need in your lead count compared to what I need in my lead count? Um, Where do I want to go in my journey? So when you're going to make millions of dollars, it doesn't mean that we necessarily have to make it every year, right? Or maybe we want to add an extra 100,000 this year because we've learned how to keep track of leads over time. So the first thing is that, you know, if you're um, a new agent, 
right? Making sure that you really do what's your strategy, make sure we get our hands around all the leads that we know, right? So I've, I've got some fun things about like, people don't know how detailed you can categorize even Facebook friends, right? But we often lose track of those. So making sure that if we really master our database, we know that we have to get them in there and set up in a good way and set them up on automation. That's where those the tools of the CRM have to come into play. So if the CRM doesn't give anything of value, when we call them, what are we going to say? Right. And so there's so this the, there's the strategy and the plan in my framework, the strategy, the plan, the process. Then you insert the technology into those things. Then that becomes the operations and you can scale. So I think that the master your database is that get our people in here. What are the lead sources that you're going to work, right? And then it, I use KV Core now, right? A lot of the different systems allow you to do hashtags. They allow you to put them in different statuses, right? So fundamentally, if you know how many leads you need, then you can project uh, how much money you need to spend or don't spend. So you don't get caught in the squirrel shiny penny, Right. And so when you I'm going to walk us through this and then I can come back into these different points, I see that happen a lot. So when when you um, have all your leads and you know what where you want to go, what the path is, then you know what your plan will be. So if you only want 100 leads and you're going to only sell 10 a year, your path is going to be different than somebody that wants to sell 100 sales a year and they're going to need more leads. Right. And then if I say I'm going to do expires and I'm going to do sphere right, then I'm going to be able to understand like, what are the hashtags or when am I going to bring them in? So strategy and then becomes the plan, right? And so then the plan from the plan, we can have the process. So then if, you know, in having tools and techniques that can leverage ourselves and repeat what we do, again, I'll come back to this. It starts to just lay out where we say, okay, if I know that I want to have a thousand leads and they're going to come in from these different lead sources. So I can go back and look at them in five years from now and say, oh, you closed hashtag in 2018. And then you went, oh, you closed. You were an expired lead that came in and I helped you sell in 2020. And then you're in 2025. And now you don't remember who those people are, you're going to be reluctant to call them, right? But if you're in 2025 and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't spend it this many years just looking at that hashtag. And then we started out as an expired. So what happens is that when we just kind of lay it out in a logical pattern, and then we start to label people, when we get to the point that we're calling them in the future, then we're not as reluctant, mm. right? And so that then, you know, that also layers into, for example, you know, KV Core. When we go, uh, we know that we know Jesse and everybody that nobody likes to really call, right? Does anybody really like to call? Nobody does. And so everybody says right now, like, oh my gosh, like nobody wants to talk to me. We're just going to send texts or they just want an email, right? I like to do this analogy, right? That says, um, how many people uh, get a get a call from a lender or how many people get emails from lenders maybe every single day? couple of times a Every, week. If you're on camera, raise your hand. I'm curious. Uh, nod your head, raise your hand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Everybody. All yeah. right. How many of them call you? Zero, one, right? So it, how are we different than they are? Right? If we're programmed to only email them, right? Which most of the default campaigns say, or they're like, call, do you leave a message? Don't leave a message. But all, all we do is email them or all we do is text. How are we creating a relationship with them? Right? So part of the strategy and the plan is that we have to remember fundamentally that we build our relationships based on our voice and our experiences with them, right? And if we know that it takes over six to eight times to get a hold of them, then the technology has to help make sure that we keep in touch with them over time. And then when it tells us to call, we need these little things like hashtags or the templates where instead of the templates should tell us what our scripts are. Like, what is it that I'm going to say? So I'll walk you through this. If I have a hundred leads and, and then we have to build into the campaigns like that I have to call, right? But if I, if I don't have little tools that help me know what to call, like hashtags, so I remember who they are, or sheets, so I remember how to set up their profile, right? So I don't feel out of rapport. Then when the technology isn't really going to service us properly, 
right? Does that make sense? And so that mm-hmm. when you have the technology servicing this that helps us keep track of these over time, and I'll I'll keep layering this, then over seven years, we are having like campaigns that say, okay, I'm gonna, you're gonna call this person and then you're gonna know what to say. You have helpers, right? But here's the other thing is that um, with the million dollar lead framework, there's another fundamental thing that I do is I don't call people, we don't call people based on buyer seller, which most every technology campaign has, right? Do you see that a lot in the campaigns? They say buyer campaign and seller campaign. But I challenge you to say, what happens if somebody is a buyer, seller, and a renter in the same transaction? You're going to run three campaigns, right? And so, for example, you're going through a divorce, right? And so if we go through a divorce, you know, we're divorcing, right? And then let's just say that, hey, I'm keeping the house, right? I'm going to keep the house until the summer. So you're going to go rent, then the summer comes, I'm going to sell, we are going to sell, I'm going to go buy. Now you're going to buy either right away or in the future. So we have a renter, a sale and two purchases and one transaction. Do you run five campaigns? Right. And so in my framework, like when I went reverse engineered it, I was like, okay, I need ways to help me remember who people are. I need ways to mirror the reality, which is that we have to keep in touch with people over time and make phone calls. But I'm going to have to solve the problem of being reluctant to call. Right. And so if I have campaigns that are based on logic that have tools that I'm not reluctant. And then how do you solve the buyer seller issue is that you call people and set up your campaigns and statuses based on life cycle and time. Right. Does that make sense? Right. So um, so that's one of the main things that are like the foundations of the framework and what I what I help people with, which is that when you have this type of mindset that you're um, or layout in your structure. So KV Core, uh, just speaking of that one. Right. One of the reasons I left um, some of the other ones is that didn't have logic that I could put into place. So KV Core, a lot of people love it. A lot of people hate it. Right. But when you break it down like this, they have new lead, prospect, active status, sphere, and then they have client and contract, which, you know, that's and then and then closed. Right. So when it comes in and they're a new lead, we're going to have a different call frequency. Would we agree than our sphere, somebody that we know, like and trust that's not planning to buy and sell right now? Would we call them at a different? Right. We would. Right. And so then that campaign runs by itself. Do we really care if they're a buyer or seller in the pattern at which we call them? Not really. Right. And so just getting past that hurdle when every other campaign. So one of the lessons that I learned, why did my leads fall out? Because these campaigns were very confusing to use and track. Right. That's and so people get frustrated with that right away. We lose rapport because what if somebody clicks on a property ad? Now, see, I'm jumping into the technology part. But this is part of the plan and the process, right? So that's kind of what happens is if somebody comes in on a new lead on a property ad, but everything you're shooting at them is based on buying, but in fact, they were just a local neighbor wanting to know and they plan to sell, our rapport gets shifted. So um, so part of it is just fundamentally to go, okay, let me break it down, meet people where they are. If we if we uh, if we have a new person, we speak to them and then they say, I'm not planning to buy and sell yet, but you have a tool that, you know, that your CRM offers, which they should. You should have market reports, seller valuation, property searches. Right. And you're familiar with those tools and you can offer that a value. And they're like, sure, I'd love to know what my neighborhood report is. And I you know, and that's built into the template. So when you call, you know what to say. Your ability to convert them and keep them in the in the flow is better than if you don't know what you have to offer and you don't know what to say or you're reluctant to do it or you haven't kind of neutralized things. Does that make sense or is that like, yeah? It makes right? sense to me. Everybody, we're getting, not, I'm seeing heads nodding. Yeah, yeah. good, good. Absolutely. Yeah. And so the other thing that, um, you know, is is quite interesting, again, so my definitions, and if you go to kimbarber.com, um, there's some free downloads you can get, which which repeat my definitions, right? So you can compare what you have to what I have. So you can uh, find it there and some other things. But when you then go, and so if you're using KV Core or if you're not, whatever you're using, 
then my definition of active, somebody that plans to buy and sell in the next 24 months or sooner. So those campaigns are built out. So if you have somebody that you know is going to follow up, they're going to close in four months versus 12. Do you agree that your frequency would be different at 12 months than four? Right. But as we get closer to the four, you know, hey, I'm you, I'm, you were 12 months out and we get closer to when they plan to buy and sell. Would we increase our frequency then? Right. So reverse engineering helped me with KV Core, at least, and, and others. I'm not trying to pitch KV Core, but it is part of the framework that I do is that it allowed me, Jesse and everybody, to um, to manipulate the campaigns enough that I could say, I know I need to call. I know I need to keep track of where they're going to buy and sell. I know I need quick reference points to remember who they are. I know I need tools to help remember the profile setups and stuff like that. So I set that up in my in my framework because that's the stuff I didn't have in the past, right? I couldn't keep up with the volume of leads that were flooding in at 1.190 a month. It was too many. But when somebody tells us that they plan to buy and sell in four months or a year or in six months or 18 months, the reason we have low conversion is we can't keep track of it. We don't know what to say often or we're reluctant to, and we, we're missing adding value as it's dripped along. So that's why things, that's one of the reasons that things start to leak through. But when you break it down one step at a time and put things in place, then you're like, okay, this makes sense, right? Maybe some hashtags that tell us when they plan to buy and sell allows me to predict my business. So that's kind of the framework that I that I came up with in a short snippet because we have uh, limited time. Oh, there's so much you can do in 30 understand. minutes. That, yeah. 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 So yeah. anyway, that's kind of the framework. Does that help kind of break things down a little bit about how, when you really start putting some structure around it and some logic into it, it, it starts it to allow us to manage thousands of leads. It, it does. And I, and I have some questions for you, which is um, obviously this is CRM, you know, could be in any CRM. You use KV Core, which, which I mean, we have agents from all different brokerages that, that listen to this podcast, but a lot of them are with EXP. So it's cool because they get KV Core for free. So right. we built a lot of these pieces into there. Is it, um, does it hit a point though, where it still gets overwhelming in terms of you have these tasks and calls and things like, or does your system, does your platform kind of help eliminate that, that feeling of overwhelm? It eliminates the feeling of overwhelm. So okay, what, my, what I have, right. I'm sorry. Say that again. I said, tell me more about that, because that, that's really been the, what I've seen a lot of these things. It works well until it doesn't. Right. Yes. And I think that's that's the part even um, for myself where I, I am like, where do I start? Right. It took me about 18 months to figure this out. So these lessons learned and I do. I, I hope it's OK. I do a free live masterclass. Um, no, I, I want you, I want you to, I, I, guys, we say this all the time. I don't make a dime. If you pay Kim for anything, if you go to any free okay. things, like I want you to Kim to, to get, to help people. I want you to help them sell houses in this market to maximize their leads. So right. send, send, whatever right. you can do to offer them is great. Right, right, right. So also if you go to kimbarber.com on the front page, um, it's kimbarber.com or forward slash masterclass or go there. You can uh, learn more about what I have, but you can join it. It's a free live masterclass that I host uh, every Wednesday, hopefully soon it'll be automated. But uh, yeah, and so I'll give you more of this information, right? And this and this framework can use for any CRM, right? Because some of the things that, um, that there's a couple of different layers of this. So the thing that's also always missing that I see is that people just want to jump in to the technology piece, right? And I, I just want to jump in and I want to learn it, or I just want it to work. Can somebody set it up for me? Right. I see this all the time. And that's because usually there is an overwhelm. But as an entrepreneur, we can't we we shouldn't spend all of our money generating leads and then toss it over the fence for somebody who's completely less experienced for them to manage for us without having ways for us to pass our experience to them. Right. So the difference of how I approach it also is that we have to understand how we're going to integrate the technology into our business. And that alone avoids overwhelm. Right. So if we just talked about that strategy, how many leads do I need? One part of overwhelm is that we have too many leads. I don't know where to start. Or a really bad story is one time I had somebody dump import 260 leads into a campaign that was set where I was supposed to have a call every 90 days. So what happened in 90 days? I had 260 more people dump on my on my call list that day. I could never catch up. So there's all these devilish details that you also learn in the masterclass that I help people avoid 
based on lessons learned. So how do you avoid the overwhelm is just to remember that the technology is a piece of it. And if you break it down and chunk by chunk, right, and then then you can avoid it. So for example, um, maybe you have a bunch of leads to clean up, right? Then you can start saying, okay, let me just get all my sphere or all of my home valuation, all, all of my circle prospecting or all of my expireds and put in the people and focus on the people first that I have all their addresses and I have all their emails, right? And so that's a place that you can start and say, how many do I have there? Perhaps you have enough that you don't have to buy more leads, right? Or perhaps you don't. And so that keeps us that squirrel shiny penny, I think gets us into overwhelm. And then I think, and then, and then second, you know, separately, you can learn the technology pieces and they come together. So I help people, I coach people and I teach people how to do this and inherently watching me help you get your business organized so that you can get your database and get your leads flowing over periods of time. You learn how to properly use the CRM, how the CRM is designed to use, right? And I and I see a lot of people get frustrated because the campaigns are frustrating, right? Because they're not written based on experience. Yep. They're written based on a technology company. It's not their job to build campaigns for us, nor is it somebody from Fiverr or somebody that hasn't sold a ton of experience of houses, right? They can't, you know, that, does that make sense? It, it does. So, so, so we, we only have about two minutes, but if, if there was one thing that you've learned you know, from working with agents over the years, I and mean, you work with a lot of agents, is there any first place that people should start with this or is it different from everyone to kind of take stock of what, what their database looks like and what leads they have? So I would, I would say this, um, the one thing, can I have two things? The one thing that I'm just going to say is that the sphere is the gold mine. So never lose track of your sphere and hold them like precious gold and make sure that all of them are in there into your database and, and remember to keep track of your leads where they're at. The other thing is I mentioned about understanding that technology. I think if you, and again, you can go to my website, you can go to any of them, but if you understand the whole purpose of it and, and get the framework of the technology and, and step back and look at the vision of it, then you can say, does this, can I make this match my clients where they're at? Right. Because I had so many, we have so many people unsubscribe and, and I can't, if I can't add value to them in an automated way, then it's hard to scale. Does that, does that make sense? Makes total sense. Yeah. yeah. I, I love it. Kim, this is great. I, I, I got a ton yeah. out of this already. I mean, I'd love to have you back on again. We kind of drill down into a couple of these topics, but I mean, you've said it a few times. I just want to make sure that the best way for someone to, to find out more info on you, to connect with you, would it be kimbarber.com? Kimbarber.com. Yeah. Yep. And then I have a channel that's at Kim Barber, but YouTube at Kim Barber. So there's a lot of value there. And then, yeah, I definitely encourage you to join one of my free live masterclasses. We'll drill into it more and um, yeah, love to, love to help you excel. That's my goal. It's great. Yeah. K Carrie put, I don't know if it's on the chat box. She said, I thought you looked familiar. I've seen you on YouTube. So there you go. Ah, There you go. <laughs> good, good, good. Yes. Here I am live in, in, in zoom. <laughs> it's working. Well, thank, Kim, you. thank you for being here, guys, everybody. Absolutely. Uh, this is great. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll be back here tomorrow, guys. This is if you got questions for Kim, you know how to find her, you know how to reach out. Uh, thanks, right. Kim. This is awesome. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. If you'd like more information or to get connected to the Agent Power Huddle, join our free Facebook group. This call was designed for the agents in our EXP organization, but open to any agent from any brokerage. If you're a guest and you're interested in learning more about EXP or our specific resources within the Agent Collective, reach out to the person who invited you to this call to get more info. Produced by the Agent Collective Media Network.